Chapter 13 and 14, beginning with verse 34. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. According to the Gospel of John, these words were said by Jesus in a farewell address to his disciples. The incident took place in the upper room at the time of the Last Supper. And unlike the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, in the Gospel of John, there is no breaking of bread, no sharing of a cup of wine. But there is a, a one difference, there's foot washing, and the second difference is this rather long address, the final words of Jesus to his disciples. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. According to Jewish law, there were over 600 different rules that the, the, Jew, the followers of Judaism were to practice and observe. But Jesus cut through all of those rules and according to John, gave this one commandment, a new commandment, that you love one another. This is most interesting, I think, it's a, it's a startling way to simplify the love of God and the love of humanity. This is the one thing we are to do. This is the test we are to pass. Usually the month of May is the, is the month when people in various uh, academic institutions are preparing for their final exams. They don't know what the questions will be on the final exam. And in many ways, what Jesus is giving the disciples is their final exam. But he's telling them what the final question will be. What is it that they have to answer to? Well, it's this, that you love one another. I wonder how well you and I pass the test. Jesus gave us a lot of help in knowing how to pass that test with our neighbors. When we look outside of ourselves, we know how we're supposed to love the stranger. He, he told us the parable of the Good Samaritan and with the wounded stranger, we are to offer help and rescue and solace and comfort and even healing. And what are we to do about loving relatives? Well, he gave us the parable of the prodigal son. We're to welcome our relatives, even the difficult ones. And we're to make sure they're, they know that they are loved by us. And we welcome them home and we welcome them into our midst. And we cherish them and demonstrate this in every way we can. What are we to do with the sick? How do we love the sick? Well, we offer healing for them. How are we to love the hungry? We're to feed them just as Jesus fed 5,000 hungry people on the mountainside. What are we to do to love old people? Well, we're to care for them and provide for them just as Jesus provided for his mother. What are we to do to love those who, are, who declare themselves our enemies? Well, we're to be reconciled with them as best we can, to reach out our hand to the people. According to the Southern Poverty 
uh, legal center, there are uh, over 1,000 organized hate groups operating in the United States today, at least four of them here in the Chicago area. Neo-Nazis, the Ku Klux Klan, white nationalists, segregationists, those who spew the gospel of hatred and of mistrust of anyone who doesn't look like them or doesn't share their political views of segregation and separation of the races. We see them. We see them parading in front of our legislative centers. We see them armed with their automatic weapons, spewing their doctrine of hatred, and we wonder to ourselves, what is going on in their hearts that they have turned out to be this kind of human being? In Luke 45, 645, we read, good persons bring good things out of the good stored in their hearts, and evil persons bring evil things out of the evil stored up in their hearts. <clears throat> For out of the overflow of their hearts, their mouths speak. The words of Jesus describing some of the people, maybe all of us in the world today. So the secret, apparently, is to look inward at our hearts and see what is stored in them. It's kind of like spring cleaning this particular Sunday. It's the sixth Sunday after Easter, and according to the lectionary, every three years is a time for house cleaning, or heart cleaning at least. So today, I invite you to join me in looking inside your heart. Love, in many ways, measures our stature. The more we love, the bigger we are. There is no smaller package in the world than a man all wrapped up inside himself. In contrast, the person of faith is one who is being grasped by the power of love. Love measures our stature. If we fail in love, we fail in all else. Nothing is right for us. Love, and you're a success, whether or not the world thinks so. The highest purpose of Christianity, which is primarily a way of life rather than a system of doctrine, is to love one another. And every night before we go to sleep, each of us should ask one question of ourselves. In what ways did I not love today? This question and the answer we give helps to form us as persons who can pass the love test. For if we fail in love, we fail in all else. Bishop Richard of Chichester in England in the year 1253, that's a long time ago, was on the outs with the King of England, who had it in for him and was refusing to uh, provide him with the resources he needed as a bishop. So the Bishop of Chichester, barefoot, walked around his diocese to visit all of his churches and help them all become more faithful followers of Jesus. And he gave us this prayer. Thanks be to thee, our Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which thou hast given us, for all the pains and insults which thou hast borne for us. O merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly. A young composer in America 
took this prayer and turned it into a song to be sung as part of a stage show. Day by day, day by day, dear Lord, three things I pray. To see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day. Time to look in our hearts to see what love is there. Because love measures our stature. As Christians, it's love that is our calling. Make love your aim, said the Apostle Paul to the people in Corinth. If I speak in the tongues of angel of mortals and of angels, but do not have love. I am a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Believe all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Now I know in part then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known, and now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Words for healing the heart. Love is our calling. It's the calling of this congregation, and we demonstrate it by the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit in our midst, in our life together, we perform acts of kindness, acts of caring, acts of mutual support, acts of love. And this is the way we respond to Jesus when he said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Amen.